This is Joe, Michelle, Melissa, and Shannon with More Than a Sniff, where we talk about everything dog, from training to nutrition, from behavior modification to grooming, from vet visits to dog parks, from getting to know us to having guests. Today we're going to talk about how to manage your own feelings and not putting them onto your dogs. And I think it comes down across the board from getting a new puppy to getting um, an adult dog to getting, you know, what everybody else calls a rescue that we don't, we don't title dogs like that, but you've adopted a dog. Um, and, um, we, we tend to put our own emotions onto what they're feeling and what they're thinking. And, and ultimately we forget that they're animals and yes, they have emotion. Yes, they have feelings and yes, they react to those, but their reaction and the way they handle those emotions are completely different from what we handle um, and how we handle emotions. So, um, Michelle, talk to me a little bit about when you feel bad, what does that feel like to you? Like when I'm feeling like bad and depressed and like the world, (laughs) yeah, something bad has happened or how is life going to go on type of thing? Uh Yep. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I definitely... I think everybody has those moments. Sure. Of, yeah. Life sucks. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so what do you think a dog feels when they're uh, what we're going to call uh, sad? How do, you, how do you think a dog handles that? What does that mean, really? Mm, interesting question. Um, I mean, I've met unhappy dogs in my life. Um, because their owners are not fulfilling them in some way that they need to be fulfilled. But I don't think it's in the way we think it is. Right. Like, uh, I don't think they sit around going every day being like, Oh my gosh, I'm so miserable. Like Mm -hmm. I I, dogs don't, they don't internalize things like that. They're definitely living in the moment. So it's, if your dog is, if you're not doing something to fulfill your dog and what I mean by that is I do think that there are certain breeds that do need more Mm -hmm. of something than another Mm -hmm. um I have herding dogs so I think they definitely need more physical and mental exercise during that physical time it can't just be hey let's go for a run because that is not working their brain and that is the biggest part right of of them that needs to be working alongside with the physical part of it yep um where my cavalier obviously that's not that's not what she needs in her life like she that would be like a nightmare to her so yeah <laughs> yep. so I, what I mean is like I do think there are certain breeds and certain dogs that need certain things and and there are th- times that we're not fulfilling those things yeah um but it is once you figure out how to fulfill those things we can make that change and it's not like your dog is like oh my gosh I'm so much happier now right I'm not just sitting around doing nothing now like yeah. dogs just don't think that way right right and they're not like human being triggers of sadness would be you know there's always um shopping therapy there's always the food therapy there's always I and mean, we have triggers that that like oh I don't I'm sad I need this or you know and something that fulfills us but a dog doesn't it's not going to go eat because it's sad or it's not going to go shopping because it's sad um and it's not going to be joyful if you bring home a toy that you went shopping for them and make it all better because it's really about their needs are not being fulfilled and they don't know how to do it right um and so so do you feel like we put those sad emotions onto our dogs when, for example, um, Trigger loaded up this weekend quite a bit because I was working her pretty hard. Um, and, you know, if if I put emotion of a sadness that she's sad because she got worked so hard, I mean, people would see that she's, you know, hovered up in her favorite load up spot in the corner and like, you know, we would say, oh, she's so sad. She doesn't want to work Um, where for her and knowing her, she's just ranchy enough that she doesn't want to be told what to do. She would like to do things on her own terms and therefore I'm just not going to do anything Um, that she wasn't sad. I mean, and when she started working, she was working. It was just like, I don't I would rather do something else on my own and not be told what to to do by you um what's another example of melissa of an emotion that we tend to put on our dogs um 
that they don't really either respond to the same or feel the same. Um, I think the biggest that I hear people talk about is, oh, my dog misses me when I'm at work. Mm -hmm. Or my dog's sad to be in the crate. They don't want to be in the crate. Mm -hmm. Um, That we put the idea of missing. Mm -hmm. Dogs don't really think like that. Like, they know something's different. Like, Mm -hmm. obviously, they know that, but they're not going to be in their, like, sad. Oh, I'm stuck in this crate, and they're at work without me, and they didn't bring me. They don't think in that many steps. Yeah. <laughs> like it's yep. it's oh I'm in my great think in the future. Yeah, no, the it's past. this mm-hmm. is where I'm at now. This is what's happening. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Do you think they can be uncomfortable in their crates? Yes. Why? Um if they're not properly crate trained, it could be an uncomfortable kind of an anxiety can come mm-hmm. from it because mm-hmm. all of a sudden if you've never crate trained your dog and then you stick them in the crate for eight hours, mm-hmm. it's a huge change mm-hmm. and it hasn't become a safe place for them yet. So they right. definitely cannot enjoy it yeah and they're uncomfortable but they're not thinking oh I wish I was right outside playing in the grass with my favorite toy it's more like this is where I'm at now I don't really like it I'm not really comfortable so I'm gonna see if I can get out well I can't get out so I'm just gonna sleep because what else exactly yeah 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 they're not thinking that it's a survival all of the dog's emotions are a survival reaction so if they're happy and they're joyful then there's no survival that needs to be. If they're sad, then there's a survival need that's not mm-hmm. um, being fulfilled. And and not just food and water, but play and yeah. mental things and stuff like that. So um, that's a really good one that people try and put on that they don't like the creator. They, they've just never been taught what that is and how to, to be okay with it. Uh, I've got a couple of things just on the crate thing really quick, though. That to me just says that you have failed your dog, that that they don't get released from the crate. Mm -hmm. Um, Even with the whole trigger thing, to me, what you're saying is that, yeah, she was getting worked and she was getting fulfilled that way. But she found those places because those were her releases and she needed those for a second. And of course, dogs need that just like we do. Um, And that that should be your the crate should be a release for your dog. That should be like, oh, I can go in here and I can just relax and chill out and and sleep yeah that's great that's fantastic dogs sleep a lot more than than we give them time to do right um right and my other thing is just to kind of it kind of goes with this but kind of not I, I was just thinking the biggest thing that I always got told when I worked at the boarding facility was oh my dog is mad at me when we get home mm-hmm. he's mad that I was here that I left him there for the last week mm-hmm. and that is the silliest emotion I think I've ever heard anybody put yeah. on their dog yeah no your dog is exhausted they have been in a in a stressful situation for a week of course they're going to go in the other room and sleep they that is their relief and sleep yep boarding facilities as as much as i think are necessary and we need them they're stressful yeah (laughs) yep and your dog is not mad at you it just is exhausted yeah dogs don't have that emotion yeah yeah um the other thing is is people getting a second dog and well the older dog's not in the crate anymore so the other one's jealous that they're in there um, a jealousy type emotion and dogs don't get jealous either. They're just not human beings at all. Um, Shannon, talk a little bit about your pack and how um, you perceive um, everybody's communication. Do you see happy? Do you see joy? Do you see disgust? Do you see anger? Do you see... Um, that's That's kind of... And do you see something that you would call jealousy? Mm, Well, I think, like, all of their behaviors, Mm -hmm. let's say, are a reaction to communicate Mm -hmm. with each other. Mm -hmm. And we, people, are, like, the basis of our our society is based on emotion. Yeah. And so all of these things are just a label that we put on what those behaviors are so that we can understand them and talk about them to each other. Right. Because we don't um, rely as heavily on physical communication yep. to express our feelings because that's really like all that humans are, right? Right. We talk about to express our feelings. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. And so, I, so feelings is a label that we put on the behavior of the dog so we can communicate to each other about it, uh-huh. um, which is the main thing that we see when we go into homes. Yeah. Because people describe the behavior of their dog always to us yes. by emotion. Correct. And so we have to know what, how people perceive emotion and connect it to uh, a communication or a behavior that the dog gives. Right. So in answer to your question, <laughs> yes, 
if we're labeling behaviors with emotions uh-huh. in order to communicate with them uh, yes. about them, yep. I do see all of those right. emotions. I use air quotations, emotions in my dogs yep. at my house. So jealousy uh-huh. um, would be um, dogs wanting to be dominant and own the things, mm-hmm. the objects of the yard. Uh-huh. So if everyone gets a bone... And then somehow they're jealous that that other bone's better because they don't have it, right? right. So then they play bones trade. Uh-huh. Like they go, all go and steal each other's from each other. And they're like, no, I have the proper one. Right. Even <laughs> right. though they're all the same and you gave them to them all at the same time. Yep. Somehow the one that somebody else has is better. Mm-hmm. And so they trade them all. And it has nothing to do with the size of the bones yep. or it's just like a wanting to have a different one kind of a thing. <laughs> it's and, so and, normal. And yeah. so, and is that really jealousy? No, they're not really like jealous and hateful, but yeah. they have a bone and it's better it's than got theirs. a little bit because more fat on I it. really don't know why it's better. I have no idea yeah. why it's better because they're all exactly the same yep. in my perception as yep. a human. So, so that would be one that I would say people would label that as jealousy, yep. but it's the, it doesn't have that deep-rooted feelings that right. we do. Yeah. Their feelings are very much more surface and very much more neutral, yeah. where people have really extreme emotions uh-huh. like hatred, anger, yeah. you know? Yeah. And the, I would say the anger equivalent of a dust. Yes. Yep. They don't, can't get all the way to anger. They only get as far as disgusted. Right. So they're much more even-tempered. A creature than a human who's like an extreme like I feel like I'm a rage ape <laughs> like compared to my dog right because like yep. I get mad and I'm like ah, I'm so angry yeah. and that's just because I'm a human and the dog's just like ew that's disgusting <laughs> you <laughs> right. know what I mean yeah. and yeah. so I feel like really extreme in emotions compared to a dog yeah yeah I think that um, I think that is awesome description to it all is that's how we have to describe it um, because we don't. And and maybe, you know, as you were talking through that, maybe that's why I just don't talk about my dogs because, I mean, we have this relationship and this friendship and this um, understanding and, and we coexist together and um, there's rules and expectations in the households across the board. But I don't I don't really talk about their emotions and 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 so maybe that's why I don't talk about my dogs is because today is today and it is what it is and it's raining for two minutes and then it's over and we're all kind of wet and you stink and you know go get your crate and it's just you know there's just not any emotion to to it um Mick has discovered that uh he's kind of turned a corner here and he's discovered that getting in his crate is not um it's not what he really would like to do because he's finding more joy in other things. And so it's becoming a question um, and answer, but it's not that he doesn't want to go into his crate. It's that he's discovered a whole different world that all of a sudden opened up to him. That's always been there, but he's, he's discovered it. And so, um, so I think that it's really like, I don't, I just don't talk about my dogs probably because I don't talk about emotion that way because it's just not what they feel. Um, and I'm, I always truly really try hard to be in the moment of, of the dogs and, and, um, and not get caught up into anything else with it. Um, Melissa, do you have anything to add about emotion? Yeah, I think, um, a lot of times dogs teach me a lot more than sometimes I teach them in a session. Mm-hmm. Like I'll have moments where I'm like, wow, like they kind of really, they're very Zen mm-hmm. in that if they feel sad, they sit in the sadness, meaning they're like, okay, I'm sad. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do about it? And I'm saying sad kind of right as we would translate it, but they sit with their emotions. If they can't fix it, they sit with it. Yeah. They will kind of manifest it, but they're not going to be pouting or whining about it. Right. Um, I like to catch myself. Um, Nick will often tease me. He's like, is this trainer Melissa or dog mom Melissa? Mm -hmm. Cause I'll say stuff about my dogs. Like, kind of give them the like, voices or personality yeah yeah um which is the dog mom part of me but then right. the trainer kind of more logical <laughs> will yeah. kick in yeah um but like this weekend I caught myself kind of having that those emotions on my dogs mm-hmm. um so I gave Cooper and Yuki a bone and 
um, Yuki thought that Cooper's was much better. Mm -hmm. So she went over and stole it from Cooper and then sat on both of her bones Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and was like, this is a great place. And I was like, at first I was like, oh, Cooper's going to feel bad. Yeah. And I had that. Cooper looks over, starts rolling around, playing with a rock and a stick. Yeah. And then moseyed over and grabbed the other one. Yeah. And I was like, well, yeah, they, she was kind of just like, oh, it's gone. Yeah. I'll do this. I'm playing. Oh, I'll go get it. But they're not like Shannon's saying extreme. They don't. Yeah. It's just so matter of fact. Yep. Yep. And I feel like I want to be more like that. So often I'll be like, okay, be more like a dog. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. Sit with the emotion. Yeah. I think I'm quite the opposite. I feel like I am a very emotional person, Uh like especially with my dogs, especially with Murphy. Like I'm so emotional with them, but I think it, it comes back down to a few things. I mean, one, it's survival for them. So mm-hmm. everything, I mean, who knows that bone might for some reason just be more of like, yeah. oh, it's a survival thing. Yeah. Um, And then you also have to like really think into the whole pack stuff and who actually really belongs where and stuff like that. Yep. Um, which not enough people actually really think through that in their, their packs. Right. Um, I mean, being one of them, because I, like I said, I'm very emotional that way with my dogs. Um, but... I don't have children, so I can't say anything about having children, but sure. I don't think you treat them the same. Any of your kids. You can, you're the only one here that has kids, Joe. So yeah. like, do you feel, I mean, and I know Cheyenne's different because she lives here and the other two live, far, mm-hmm. but like, I don't feel like growing up, my mom treated us the same. No. Of course she tried to make things fair, yep. but she didn't treat us the same. And I don't think we need the same things. No, that's, that's the whole thing. I think thing. that's what, oh, like what, where I'm getting at. Like me and my brother need completely different yep. things. Um, so I feel like with my dogs who Murphy is my baby, I will Mm -hmm. admit it. Like I, that dog, like I cry like every other day thinking that he's seven. I'm not joking. Like I will break down crying sometimes thinking about how old he's getting, uh, which is just ridiculous. But, but I treat him so much differently than like, than I do the other two, Mm -hmm. my littles and June is completely, she's in like left field right now. So, um, Murphy is, was never allowed on the bed. He was never allowed on the couch and it was not, has nothing to do with like oh it's fair to him or it's not fair to him because the littles can get on I felt it was a fair for them that they had a place to mm-hmm. get away from such a big dog yep um b he's huge so we didn't want him in the bed with us yep as he got bigger and also in in a pack kind of sense I wanted them to be more dominant over him so they needed to get above him and right. be over him and um and so I didn't treat him the same yeah and I don't treat them fairly right I do not like I mean, fairly is probably yeah. a wrong word for it. I probably do f- treat them fairly, but I treat them as individuals. Yep. And and I think with dogs versus kids, it's easy to treat them as one. Yeah, you know, so it's funny that you say that because um, as the kids, I mean, Sydney and Riley um, being living in Montana, um, they would come down for the summer from the time that they were, uh, I guess, three four and five five three four five and six that's what it was and um and so every summer they would all have to go to the same and um so I would I would pick it and they would all have to go into these crazy camps and and we always knew who didn't like camp and who (laughs) liked it and um and I tried to kind of find it in each of their little areas but they all had to do it and one summer, instead of going doing one camp, we didn't do a vacation. They just did camp after camp after camp. And so they did horse camp and they did golf camp. And they, I mean, it was everything. And so it's funny because they still talk about it to this day. Like, oh, I hated it. And there was things like Cheyenne loved the horse camp, you know. But, and I knew they didn't like horses and poor Sydney had allergies. And, but you're going to do this anyway and you're going to love it. And, um, and why would you not love horses and going to horse camp? Right. And then, you know, <laughs> it was like, now you're going to work with me for the summer. So they all had to march around walking dogs with me. And that was not always fun for me or them. But they've, you know, so yeah, you don't treat them the same. Right. Um, it doesn't work out. I mean, it works out well, but not really. Um, it was a good experience <laughs> it's called for them. Exposure. <laughs> <laughs> and there are definitely things I make my dogs do they don't want to do. Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. But, um you don't, it's not all the same and it's not one getting, je- you know, the Sydney would not have been jealous if Cheyenne got to go to horse camp and she did not. Right. Like it <laughs> would right. not have happened. Right. So it's just, it's our own, um, we look at it and go, Oh, they're sad. Well, maybe they're sad because you've failed them, but not 
because they're sad. Right. Like dogs don't get, that is what's so amazing about them. Like they don't get sad. They are surviving and then it's still not sad. It's called survival. And if we as human beings, you know, if we have like the zombie apocalypse, I mean, we're, gonna, we're not going to be sad. We're going to survive. And we're going to be sad that we lose somebody and that our pack is getting weaker. But we're not, it's still more of a survival thing, right? And so when I see a dog that's sad, it's more about their needs of survival is not being met somewhere that they're struggling and that somewhere some needs are not being met. It's not a sadness. Um, and that's what I think I really love about the dogs is that they're, there's emotion, but they're, they're in it and it is what it is. And that's, and there's nothing more than what it is. Um, they don't go, Oh, I'm, you know, we don't have enough money for food and gosh, why aren't, why am I only getting a half a cup versus a cup? Um, I, I didn't get any coconut oil in my food. You know, it's, it's, they just don't, they're just like, yeah, I'm just not going to eat. Don't need it. You know, it's just so, um, however the dogs do like competition and they do, they are competitive, but they're not jealous. I think in the definition of a lot of people's minds, if you actually came and looked at my house, you, you would think Murphy was the jealous one because he's the one that will push the other dogs out of the way Uh at this point in their, in their age. It has in my eyes has absolutely nothing to do with that. He's jealous. Yep. It is that I called Rambo over to me. So Murphy's just like, Oh, that's what we're doing. Uh Uh-huh. Yep. I just brought exactly. attention to myself and me and yep. Murphy do everything together. So yep. it's just like, he's like, oh, okay. It has nothing to do with him being right. like, oh, Rambo, you can't have the attention. I get the attention. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to me, if you have dogs fighting, then that's, that's on you. And you like, you are doing right. something wrong that you are miscommunicating with them that they don't know what's going on. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I think it's, uh, you know, my advice to everybody out there is to, to don't, don't put your own emotions on your dogs. Um, let them have their emotion, let them be real about their emotion and make sure that their survival needs are being met. And then, um, and then just be together and learn to be together and, and enjoy what they have to give you and, and, um, sit back and watch them. Even if they're just at your feet, there's a lot to learn right there. (laughs) 